thinking about Moshe and the many stories that come to mind, the one that stands out right now actually comes from maybe the most important learning that I took from Moshe, which is surprising for people. It's learning how to think. As much as learning movement, he was so interested in us learning how to think clearly and with self-questioning. A lot of people don't know that part of Moshe. So in the San Francisco training, he would castigate us for our sloppy thinking and for what he called one-sided thinking. He would say, if you can't look at something from at least three and ideally five points of view, you really don't understand your own beliefs. If you can't argue against your own point of view emotionally and effectively, you don't really understand your point of view. And this made such an impression on me. And in today's world with the po political world and Oh boy, do I, I wish this was a part of people's education, learning to think from multiple points of view, to get out of causal thinking, which was another one of his things. And, you know, I, I would say you grow empathy when you can see from another's view. And he didn't talk about it that way, but that made a huge impression on me. And this, that's the background of this story. It was 1982 and um, I was in Tel Aviv. He had had his first stroke some months before that. And I had gone there to give him Feldenkrais lessons, functional integration lessons. Where I would work with him twice a day. He was just starting to work himself with a girl who had a brain injury and he would work with her I'd work with him at about nine in the morning. He'd work with her around 11. And then I'd work with him again at about five. And I'd stay with him all day. And we'd sit at his desk and talk. And it was the most formative time of my life. So this was a time when the Israelis, the, the, there were bombs coming in from Lebanon, missiles. And the Israeli Air Force was flying overhead frequently to bomb in Lebanon. And this was profound, of course, and we would hear them flying. And Moshe had his little radio and he'd turn on his radio to hear the news reports. He translated them for me. I don't speak Hebrew. And, you know, I came of age in the era of Vietnam, you know, hippie protests, peace. And so innocently, I said, one day we're sitting there and the planes just went over. And I said, oh, Moshe, Moshe, when are people going to stop killing each other like this? This is so ridiculous that humanity is still in this state. And he looked at me and he said, Russell, you're an idiot. <laughs> he talked very uh, plainly. <laughs> he had a smile when he said it said, have you ever really thought about war? I go, no, you know, it was obvious to me, war is bad, peace, good. He said, do you know that the most major medical advancements in the history of humanity have come because of war? More good, more life-saving discoveries have come because of war. I was kind of startled. And then he goes, and there has not been one thing that has spread the gene pool more than war, where cultures mix and different parts of humanity mix and we widen the gene pool. Have you thought about that? And have you thought about all the science that grows when these cultures mix? And he went on and on. And I went back to where I was staying, Gabby Yaron's apartment, and I was like this. I was, you know, I was so sure of my positionality, and we all know that certainty uh, is a 
great danger. And I, I was reeling. I couldn't quite get it. I did get that I stopped thinking in my certainty, peace, good, war, bad, full stop. And it, 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 it shook me a little bit. And so I'm there and it's the next day. I remember sitting there, it's noon, or lunch is coming up, Baruch, his brother would bring us some food. And the planes go overhead and the news report comes on. And I say, Moshe, humanity is developing right now. With this, of course, I was joking a bit, but commenting on it. And he said, Russell, you're an idiot. What could be worse than innocent people being killed by bombs? Now, he was not complaining about the Israeli Air Force because he thought they were justified. So we're not getting into that political side, but that there were innocent people, children, who, who were being hurt, being killed. And so such a profound instance of what he liked to do, pull the rug out from under your, your, your certainty, your thinking, your clarity, get you to work. Get you to, you know, he used to say, I lost my teeth chewing on problems like this. <laughs> and, and I had stopped chewing. And so when I look at anything today, politically, um, in my personal life, when I can't understand another human being, I really do the hard work of placing my view to the side, not pushing it away, but opening to include the reality of another human being and how perhaps if I had their history, that's the way I would see it. Now, the key here is that you don't become paralyzed by being able to see from five points of view. You still have to act. He was a man of action, of doing. And so sometimes when people widen their view and open their heart, they become stuck. It's not that. It's being able to enact your point of view with strength, with dignity, and with the pain of appreciating that others are really seeing it differently and they are valid in their view. So that's my story of Moshe and the greatest gift he gave me. <laughs>